Thank you, Jordan Duncan. I'm mm -hmm. and we'll be discussing the tree trimming program, which has been a hot topic for
and our government officials and start asking questions. We want to make sure that you have all the information that we do and then you can answer their questions as they come in. So at the end of phase one, after the phone calls and the letters would go out, we'd go into phase two. And what we've done in the past uh, basically eight months, we've wrapped, ramped up an organization around planning where we send uh, DTE representatives out and we knock on every single door that we're going to work on um, and basically work with each one of those customers and residents um, one by one. At that point in time, what we would do is we'd go through every single tree that would be uh, marked for a trim or a removal well before the work would be done. All those trees would be marked. So, for example, if a planter came out to one of your residents, they would go in and if there was a tree that was going to be trimmed, we'd mark it with a dot. If a trim was going to be, or if a tree was proposed, and I'm using the word as proposed, to be removed, we put a red ribbon on it at that point. Um, after the, all that work is done and they categorize all this, they, hold, or they program all that into a computer device so we have everything by tree species, location with GPS, so there's no misunderstanding of which trees we're talking about. Once that's planned, and that has a unique job plan for every single resident that we would have work with. At the end of that job being planned out, the planner would go up to the, the customer's door, knock on the door, <coughs> and review the plan with them, trims and removes. And if they wanted to, they would walk them through their backyard or front yard, depending on where the trees were, and show them the scope every step of the way. If there are any tree removals, there is an acknowledgement that we are proposing removal, and at that point, the customer, or actually, we make sure it's the property owner would be signing off on it. So we look at uh, real estate records and ensure that we're actually working with the property owner of the residents. Um, so at that stage, the, the resident and the customer would be fully aware of the scope of work that, uh, that would be going on in the property. In the case where they're not home, all of that would be true. We believe a door hanger with the planner's contact information and cell phone number for them to be able to call back and for us to go back and have that face-to-face -face communication. So our goal is we're going to do everything in our power to have a face-to-face -face communication <coughs> with the customer and the resident to make sure they understand all the work that we're proposing to do. Um, at that stage, we're going door by door, customer by customer, and we work our way through the circuit. At the end of that, notice that is from from seven weeks out all the way to two weeks before any tree crews would ever show up. So at this stage, there's not any uh, any tree work happening usually in the community at that time, or at least in that neighborhood. Um, at that point in time, once the circuit is completely planned, that job plan is in writing. It's printed out for our tree companies. And it's also electronic format as well, so they can use electronic devices. And at that point in time, uh, we move into phase three. At this point, I'll take a breath and see if you guys have any questions up to this point. Any questions, Councilman? Yes, uh, you, you address trees. Uh, however, we did a walk a couple of weeks ago over at the Carlton and Nancy at the station, <coughs> and there were vines, with an empty lot, and there were vines coming out of this lot, trees, and coming over the, the lines. And I wonder, they look like they've been there a long time, and that has been seen several places throughout the city. <coughs> Why aren't those being removed as your company evaluates the trees? Sure. I'll answer that. That's a great question. It should be, and, and part of what we're going to ensure happens is in the planning process, that vine or any vegetation that would approach our, equi or approach our equipment, we would include that in the scope of the trimming work. So part of this planning process would identify those vines for removal. So if those were observed by the city at the time when you meet with the, in the first phase, the city leaders, um, those particular places that we've noticed that, they should be told to DTE? Yes, and at that point, what we would ask, depending on where it was located in the city, mm -hmm. um, if it was part of one of the circuits we were going to work in that year, we would say, okay, we will include that in our plan and ensure that we take care of it this year. If it was a circuit that's maybe next year or 2017, we would send one of our arborists out and look at it and see what we think the risk is. And obviously, if the city's asking for us, we do everything in our power to, to determine if we can pull that work forward or not, meaning address it this year. 
Yeah, just uh, uh, one thing. With the removal of the trees, whether they're the branches or the entire tree, whatever the case may be, DTE is also disposing of this, these materials as well. It's not going to cost the city or, or residents any, any uh, fees or anything? No, it will not. So our, 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 spec, our specification now is all debris will be cleaned up and removed. And uh, that's our standard. If the customer wanted it to cut in fireplace size logs, we'd leave it behind it and stack for them. So it's a question, but our, our default is we're going to remove it. But if the customer asks, we will we will let it we'll keep it on property but cut it up in, in manageable pieces. Uh, what would determine whether the tree was trimmed or uh, removed? Another great question. It, it has to do with the distance from the lines, the species of the trees, how quick it grows, and um, what the health of the tree would be after we did a trimming. So if a certain amount of the tree would be uh, trimmed, required to trim of over, depending on the species, but let me just make up a, a percentage. If we would have to trim over 50% of the tree to get the clearances we need for safe, reliable power at that point, that tree most likely may be able to live through this year, but it's not going to survive for too long. So that's why we have uh, uh, professional arborists that understand what trees do and how to trim them and at what point should we do a trim versus a removal. And that's part of the conversation with each of the customers and residents to ensure what we leave behind is going to be a healthy, viable tree that's going to continue to grow. Okay, a couple more questions. One is, uh, when you take a, a tree down, do you do grind stump so that uh, you don't, that there's no, uh, there's, there's no stump there for the home? In most cases, what we do is we, we cut the, the stump, or we cut the stump or the remains as flush with the ground as we possibly can. Um, that's mostly what. That's mostly how we treat a stump. In some cases, there there could be some grinding, but grinding is not uh, applicable to every single stump. There may be a tree that's near a fence or a garage or in a location that stump grinding just can't occur. So the answer <coughs> is it's in some cases. If it's in other words, if if it's feasible, you would. But if it's not, you don't. Is that? What I'm hearing, or? Well, in most cases, we cut we cut them as flush to the ground as we can. That's our typical standard. Um, and and on exceptions, we'll we'll grind stumps. You know, cutting it as close to the ground as you can doesn't always leave a, an attractive. Sure. Uh, and and I think that's where you're. That's <coughs> part of the answer, right? So if we've got a a pretty big tree and it's a, a vocal part of your yard and it's a massive stump and it, it's right there in the center. That's when we would talk about a grinding at that point. Right? If it's back lot against a fence or a garage that nobody can see, the amount of effort and time to grind that safely um, just isn't worth it for, for the customer or for, for anybody really at that point. So that's why I'm, it, it depends. The second thing is, are you doing this with your own employees or you have contractors that are doing the trimming? We have our employees overseeing it, but all of the the uh, tree trimming is done by contractors that are certified by us and certified arborists, certified tree specialists, I should say. So you have someone on site all the time? Correct. We have oversight of, uh, of our DT crews, correct? Yes. Oversight is different than on site. In most cases, we'll have somebody that each day is there to, to oversee what they're doing, but not every single minute of the day, I guess, is what. I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cruz uh, opened the door for me, but if I only because I received a complaint uh, last week about some tree trimming that was done, and there were um, some of the tree trimmings left in someone's backyard. Um, they called DTE. Nothing happened. They had to pay a company to come out and remove the debris. So okay. what would happen in that type of situation? Yeah, most likely in that case, and I don't know the specific resident and what their address were, was, but I, I would expect because the debris was not removed, it was during a storm. So during a storm, we don't remove trees that fall down on the wires. We just remove the, the part that knocked the wire down, and the rest of the tree is up to the resident or the customer to remove at that point. But what, you, but what was taken down by DTE would have been removed. 
what was even what was removed from our wire. So right. if you can imagine, if a 40-foot oak tree from somebody's backyard yeah. fell and hit one of our <laughs> wires, we would take just the portion that was on the wires to remove that piece to get the wires back up. We take that debris and remove it. The rest of the tree would be up to the resident to, to cut up and dispose on their own. Okay. Um, I may contact uh, someone afterwards about this. Sure, thing absolutely. Yeah. Um, but when you're doing the tree trimming, if you notice that uh, some of the poles are rotted or leaning over or the wires are hanging too low, they need to be tightened. Is that something that's done as well or is that a whole separate process? In, in many cases, when there's equipment issues, the planner that's out can, will take a note of equipment issues. Um, <coughs> but there are service center planning engineers that do have circuits assigned to them, and they do pre-flights of it and make sure that poles are in the right order and everything else. So there are, is a different group that takes care of it, but our team does take notes and put it in the, the computer and handheld to let them know that there's defects or potential defects on our equipment. So we're, what we're talking about, just to clarify, we're talking about this is only during storm. During storm. So typically that's on our website, and then uh, in many cases the door crew or the the uh, tree crews have door hangers and information they can give to the customers and information to show them that that's our pretty much our policy during storm. So that is what typically done. Yes. During storm. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I'm on uh, 12 Mountain Road between Marshall Road and Southfield Road, mostly on the north side of the street by Pembroke Road or whatever. Uh, the GTE trucks go on a bike path. And if it's um, uh, wet weather, the wheels do not stay on the bike path. So they leave ruts. <coughs> it's dangerous to the bikers that bike down that bike path. Generally, they don't clean up real well on what they cut, and if there's a lot of branches that are left uh, between the sidewalk and the, and the fences of the, of the subdivisions. And I think that you have to do better. Um, the weight of the trucks have uh, really deteriorated the bike path to some degree, <coughs> both from frost uh, leaving the ground as well as the heavy trucks going on it. And uh, I think that uh, you can do better. Agreed. And, and I think if you look at our phase number four, part of phase four is our closeout process. And what we have is an independent inspection of all the work. So a couple of things happen. First off, did we plan the circuit right? Did we get the right number of tree removed? Were vines removed? All the things that you brought up. But also one of the biggest things we're looking for, in addition to that, is was all the customer debris cleaned up? Was the work sites cleaned up? Were there ruts in the yard? Were there driveways damaged? All those things will be noted, and actually, each of the contractor has a quality metric that we measure them by. So that's that's a big piece of it. So that's really part of our closeout process. That we'll have eyes independent of the tree companies looking at the work and actually giving them a quality score on that. So debris left behind and damage is going to be a high score against them and we'll ensure that we work with the customers and the communities to clean that all up. Sometimes when you have a subdivision entranceway, they pull up with the walkway and they don't hit it straight on. <coughs> they, they hit the corner and you sometimes have you know, one foot ruts depending on the wetness of the soil. Sure. <coughs> and that really is a serious situation since we care about any liabilities with our bikers. Yeah, in most cases, to get the equipment in, um, if ruts are left, um, we would ensure that they were they were put back in the condition that we found it. But you're absolutely right. So with the fall and the winter months approaching, and the trimming of trees and uh, tree removal, will you leave the the tree pieces in place until the weather clears? How's that going to happen? Our goal is to remove the debris as close the time that we cut the tree as possible. So if we're going to cut the tree, our goal is to remove that debris that day. 
so it's not leaving, so it's not left behind for the customers and the residents to see. There was a tree on 10 miles. questions are spot on <coughs> and why we've changed our process on the closeout and the removal of debris. The number one complaint we get from our customers is leaving debris behind. That's the number one. Number one to us, number one to the MPSC, um, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, we realize we're going to do better in this area. Okay? So we pretty much went through what phase two would look like. In phase three, once the trimmers start showing up, Basically, at that point in time, the residents should not be at all surprised at what work's going to be done. It's a written plan that the tree trim crews would be actually executing, so all the trees with a dot would match up with the, the, uh, the actual work plan, job plan that's numbered for that resident's property. The removals would ha be matched up for every tree removal permit, would, uh, would be there, and they would execute the work as planned. And we've seen a, in the last uh, last four or five months working this way, um, we've seen a lot of uh, customer interaction with us, and, and there's very few surprises, if any, that happen during this phase because they know it up front. We've reviewed it with them, and uh, in most cases, very satisfied with what happens. At that point, once phase three is done, that's when we send we send in our independent auditors to go in, audit the plan, make sure that circuit was cleared the way it should have been and all the debris was cleaned up, and the overall appearance is, is in at least as good a condition as we found it, if not better. And then ultimately, we would send out a customer satisfaction survey to the residents on there, and that's a way to get a voice back, and for us to continue to improve. As we've implemented this, we've learned a lot over the last six months, and I'm sure as we go forward, the residents will give us some more feedback, both positive and negative, and we'll continue to adjust to make it better. So that is our overall four-phase process, okay? The next slide I just want to just to be able to provide for you is called uh, Right Tree, Right Place. And if we were going to uh, <coughs> uh, take a look at what the best in the world tree location versus our power lines would look, this would be it. So if you take a look, uh, there's our pole on the left-hand side with some dimensions. So any tree that would, that would never grow old, more than 20 feet up, and that's that first line with that ornamental tree, that would be okay for that tree to be there. And then notice as we go out further from the pole, any tree species that's at least 20 feet tall, less than 20 feet tall and will never grow, could be within that zone. And then going further out, as the trees grow taller, the further away from the lines they would be. Now ultimately, that's not the way it is, right? We've got big oak trees and other pine trees that are really close, so that would be ideal. Um, so obviously we work with the customers and find some type of trimming alternative and in some cases they would, uh, there would be some removals but we work with the customers every step of the way there. And by the way, this, this uh, graphic uh, is supported by the Arbor, ArborDayFoundation.org. They have something called Treeline US Fit Day that we've, we've taken this right from and other utilities are using this with, with great success to say, okay, if from this point forward, if we work with all the nurseries and the homeowners and the landscape architects and say, when you're planting trees, truly look up and choose the right species. There's a number of trees that we can plant in the right place to ensure that 10 years from now, we don't have to come along and remove it or trim it, right? That's the goal to work hand in hand. And we're just kicking the program off. A, a couple of months ago, we just started kicking it off. This is on our webpage. We're including this with our customer uh, mailing letters that go out, work, working with the Home Depots and Lowe's and other nurseries to ensure that people, we're getting the word out, okay? So this though kind of gives us an idea if you take a look at the pruning zone above you know, that 20 foot mark, that's pretty much what we're looking for as far as clearances, okay? And depending on how that would work out, it would be a, in many cases a trim, in some cases a removal, okay? Very good. In the very last, oh, go ahead. You have a question. Oh, you know, just as we listen to this, I know this is an important piece um, for all of us in this regard. But in, environmentally, you know, just the whole idea of re reducing the number of trees is a concern as sure. well. Is there any uh, replacement type cycle that DTE works with? I mean, I know we have a tree fund here in the city, but is the DTE doing anything with it? Or are we working together on? Things? trying to, you know, for eliminating some trees in some place and getting some new ones in the right place because we don't lose that. Absolutely. We have a part of the DTE Foundation working
works collaboratively with different communities, and uh, we've done community level plantings together um, in different areas. So that would be something that uh, we would partner up with. Absolutely, PTE is about we'd rather plant trees than cut them down or trim them. Right? So it's, it's two things. It's, it's getting the word out to say any tree planted from this point forward, let's make it look like this. And then any ones that we do have to remove with the community, we could work together on some type of community level planting in the future. Okay. Um, as part of the education with customers, I know there's always, you know, what's an electrical line, what's a cable line, yeah. what's a telephone line. Can you educate them so that when they're, when they're looking at what you're trimming, they're not saying, well, you're not trimming enough, and, and it's really just cable lines or something else that... Yeah, good, great, great question. Part of our what we do in our planning process is do we do show uh, the customers what our in residence, what our what our equipment is versus AT and T or the, the the cable company. Um, typically, is at that 20 foot level. So if you take a look at this diagram of where we're showing where that tree could grow, that's typically at that level where the cable and the phone and the other utilities would be. Ours are usually the highest up, and they typically have a cross arm with the conductors on top of them. In many cases, um, there are some other equipment that goes below it, but it's still usually well above the 20-foot mark. But yes, the answer is yes. We do work with the residents and educate them as we do the planning. Okay. Any other questions? The last page is one that uh, I'll let you guys look at, but it's pretty much our schedule for the city of Southfield and the different color codes that we have. Um, represent each of the years that we go through. So here, here's the great news. DTE has been doing tree trimming in Southfield for years. Right? So what's different is we just want to make sure we're communicating clearly and that um, as things go forward um, that we're working hand in hand with the customers and the community level leaders. So you can see the color codes on where we're going to be working this year specifically. Most of our work is going to be in the south part of the city on a substation called Gary. Um, there's about three or four circuits there we'll be working on. And then later on in the year, Hickory is on the north side or the north end of the, the, uh, the city up, up at the top. So you can see the gray areas. There's something called H-I-K-R-Y, if I can see it without my glasses. That's the substation and all the circuit numbers that are below it are the actual circuit numbers. And you can kind of see the street locations there. So I include this map just in case somebody's out and saying, hey, when's DT going to be trimming in our area? This gives you the schedule for the next several years. Okay? I would, I would make a recommendation that maybe this gets put on the website so residents can look up the tree trimming schedule as well. Yeah. We could send this to you in a format that you'd be able to help with some uh, other communities have asked us for that and they've done the same. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you.